In this video, you will learn how to make a custom loading screen for a WebGL build. So I already prepared a small scene with some text and a sprite which we're gonna use for our logo. The first thing that you will need to do is make a WebGL build. To do that, go to File, Build Settings. If you haven't done that already, select WebGL and click Switch Platform. Also make sure that you have a scene included in the build. After that, click Build and Run and select a directory for your build. After that's done, the build should run automatically in your default browser. For this tutorial, we will be using Google Chrome. If you happen to open the build in a different browser, you can copy the IP address at the domain bar at the top and open it in Chrome. Okay, we have a build running, but the loading screen disappeared pretty quickly since we are running a local build. In order to artificially slow it down so we can have a better look, we can use the Chrome DevTools. You can open them by using the Ctrl Shift I or the F12 key. Otherwise, you can go to the menu at the top right corner. Go to More Tools and select Developer Tools. After that's done, go to Network, click on the drop down menu with the keyword online and select Fast Network. You can use the other options or create a custom one but this one should be enough. As long as the DevTools are open, the browser will slow down our loading speed. Let's also zoom out our page a little by using the Ctrl minus hotkey, so it fits in the screen. Now as you can see, we already have a loading bar and a logo. What we want to do is replace the Unity logo with our own and make our own loading bar from scratch. The first thing that we're gonna do is get rid of the Unity logo and the progress bar. We're gonna go and make both of those elements from scratch ourselves. Let's go to our build folder, go to template data directory and delete the following image files. Those images are used for the logo and the loading bar. In case of the logo, it may be obvious why we no longer need it, but in case of the loader, we won't be using any images at all. Instead, we're gonna make a loader using a styling language called CSS. Let's go back to our build directory and open it in a text editor. In my case, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code, but you're free to use a different one. We are gonna be modifying the following three files. First one's the index file, which contains the body of our web page. It's essentially the base that connects everything together. The next one is the style CSS file, which will contain information regarding colors, size, positioning of various elements, and so on. And lastly, we have the Unity Progress JavaScript file, which will contain the logic behind our loading screen. We can make all the visuals for the logo and progress bar using HTML and CSS, but for making our progress bar fill itself up, based on how much of the game we have loaded, we will need to write some JavaScript code. Okay, let's go to the CSS file and remove the following classes. Those are used by the current logo and the progress bar, which we won't need. Next, go to the JavaScript file and remove all the code in the method except the two lines at the top. For convenience, let's put our text editor on one side of the screen and the browser on the other one. You can do that on Windows by using the Windows key and pressing left or right arrow while focusing on a window. Let's refresh our game. And as you can see, we no longer have a logo or the progress bar and the game works just fine. Now let's go and make our own. Let's first add our new logo. For simplicity, we're gonna have both our logo and progress bar elements added in the HTML directly, but we're gonna have them hidden by default. We're gonna first go to the index file and create a div element with an ID custom logo and a hidden attribute. Next, let's go to the CSS file. We're gonna first want to move our logo to the center of the screen which we're gonna do by adding the following code to an element with our custom logo ID. Next, we're gonna add a background image. For that, we will need our logo PNG file. So let's go back to Unity and go to Show in Explorer and go to our Sprites folder. Let's go and copy our logo and go to our build and paste the PNG file inside the template data. Also, let's delete the sprites folder since we no longer need it. Now that's done, let's type in the relative path to our image file. 
Next, we're gonna make sure that the image fits properly inside our div element and it doesn't appear more than once and that it is positioned in the center. We can also set the image size to 200 pixels in width and height. You are free to choose a different value if you wish to. Next, go to the JavaScript file. First, check if our Unity instance lacks a reference to our logo. If yes, we're gonna look up our logo by our ID and then reveal it and make sure it's added to the Unity instance container. Now that's done, if you refresh your browser, the logo will now appear. There is one issue though, the logo remains after the loading's done. So next, we need to hide it once the game has finished loading. Let's check if the progress is equal to the maximum value, which is 1. If it is the case, we're gonna set our display value to none instead of the block value. Which by the way, we originally had by adding that hidden attribute. Now that's done, we have a fully functioning logo which appears upon loading the game and disappears once it's finished. Now let's make a progress bar, go to the HTML file and add a div element with a custom loader ID. Since this element is gonna be a little more complicated, we will also need to add a couple of child elements. Firstly, an element which will expand and fill our progress bar with a color, and the other one will be a label which will display a percentage value. Also, don't forget to add a hidden attribute, same as for the logo. I forgot to add it during the recording. Next, go to the JavaScript file. Same as previously, check if you lack a reference to your progress bar. If yes, reveal it and add it to the container. And then hide it once the game has finished loading. Now go to the CSS file. We're gonna need to move the progress bar to the center as well. In order to do that, we're gonna reuse some of the custom logo code and move it separately. Next, we're gonna move the loader a bit to the bottom so it doesn't overlap with the logo. Then add some size, a color, and a small shadow behind the loader. Next, we're gonna need to write some CSS for our fill and label class. First, we're gonna take the fill class that's inside the custom loader and assign it a placeholder value for the width. Let's say it's gonna be half full for now. And the height will be 100% since it's not meant to change. And let's use the red color for the background. In case of label, we're gonna also grab an element with class label inside a custom loader. We're gonna set its position to relative so we can move it over the fill element and then modify its top position. Then let's set a font size, make it align to the center and add a font. We added two fonts in case one of them is not available. Let's go to the HTML file for a second and add a placeholder value for our label. Now, if you reload the browser, as you can see, we have a proper looking progress bar, which is half full. The reason we added those placeholder values is so we can have a proper look at the progress bar without the JavaScript portion. Next, we're gonna need to make the progress bar move on its own instead of sitting at 50%. Let's go to our HTML file and remove our placeholder value. And then go to the CSS file and set the width value to zero, since it should be empty in the beginning. Now that's done, go to the JavaScript file. Here we're gonna make a separate function for updating the fill element and the label. It's gonna receive a value from zero to one as an argument. Next, we're gonna look up our fill and label elements. In case of fill, we're gonna use a built-in function called animate to gradually update its width. The first parameter will be an object which will contain our start and target width values. The initial value will be our current width and the target value will be our function argument, which we're gonna convert to a percentage value. Next, we're gonna add another object which will contain a duration of 300 milliseconds for our animation and a fill type forward, which will ensure that once the animation is done, the fill width won't change back to what it was. Next, let's update our label, and now our function is complete. Let's call it and use the progress bar value as our parameter. And now that's done, reload the browser, and now as you can see, we have a fully functioning loading screen with a progress bar and a logo. Everything works perfectly, but we are not done yet. If you were to make a new build, it would have the old Unity loading screen. What we need to do is move our changes to the editor and have them automatically applied upon making a build. 
This can be achieved by using a WebGL template. Luckily, we have done most of the work already. Go to Edit, Project Settings, click Player, and scroll down. Turns out that we are already using a template. We used the default one as a base and modified it. All you need to do is take the modified version and create a template from it. To do that, first create a folder called WebGL Templates. Next, create a folder specifically for your new template. In this case, the name doesn't matter, so I will just put in cabbage as the name. Next, open the build folder and move the index file and template data to your template folder. It's optional, but you can also add a thumbnail for your template. For simplicity, let's just take the loading icon and use that as our thumbnail. Just make sure to set its name to thumbnail so Unity knows what it's for. Now, if you reopen the player settings, you should see an entry for your new template. There's still one thing missing though. If you were to make a build, you would end up getting an error. Turns out that upon making a build, Unity inserts a couple of strings in the HTML file that may differ based on the project. To fix that, go to index file of your template and replace the following strings with these values. Now let's go and make our final build. And as you can see, our loading screen works just fine and we no longer have to make changes in our build. You can easily reuse this template and put it in another project. If you want to see more tutorials like these, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you can, please leave a comment with a suggestion for a future video. I would really appreciate that since there are a lot of things to make tutorials on and it would be nice to know what you would prefer. If you are interested in the source code for the project, I left a link in the description.